Hi, my name is Jijok Lake. On social media, you can find me as Adventures of a Ghanaian Girl. Today, we are in the Ashanti Regional Capital, Kumasi, at the Kumasi Zoo to see some, some animals. <laughs> Um, as you can see, um, this camel behind me was brought here by Gaddafi so many years ago to celebrate the Ashanti Hene Otum for Osei Tutu. So, yes, this very brown camel is quite old. The remaining three, the white ones, were brought here by in, from Chad um, two years ago. But this beautiful guy was brought here by Gaddafi. I don't know if he's a guy or not. He might be a lady, but <laughs> yeah. Oh. All right. <laughs> so when you enter the zoo immediately, you're met with a map of the zoo. It shows, it outlines the different um, homes for the different species of animals. Upon entrance, you see four camels, which have been with the zoo for quite some time. One camel was gifted by Gaddafi, and the remaining three were brought in from Chad about two years ago. And then you move forward to the Janet cat. And the Janet cat actually eats fruit. And then right next to the Janet cat, you have the Muna monkeys. The Muna monkeys are very playful and they are found throughout West Africa. They are very common in the Volta region as well as the Brongahafu region. The crown eagle is next on the agenda. The crown eagle can live up to approximately 14 years. They are known as the crown eagle of Africa. They are found in sub-Saharan sub Africa and they are largely sedentary. According to the tour guide, they can actually grow much bigger than what we see here today. But just because this has been kept in captivity, it is not able to grow as much as it should because eagles are meant to fly. And in this case, it's not able to fly as it normally would. They usually breed once every two years and they start their hunt usually at dawn they kill their prey by morning and their strength is typically found in their talons as you can see here this um as you can see here this crown eagle is consuming meat that has been provided by the zoo so that's a donkey and there are so many of them all over the place <laughs> And they're just strolling. They're not in cages. They're actually free to roam around the premises. There are quite a few of them. You can see about two of them back there. This is obviously one. There's one over there as well. They're all over the place, actually. The donkey is running towards us. No, they're for that, for them, that's <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Donkeys, they're domestic animals. They don't... It, was, it was running, actually. <laughs> Can I touch it? No. Touch. Hi, baby. Oh. Oh no! Why? <laughs> <laughs> so this donkey is ready. Uganda national team, you know the name. I imagine cranes. Call them the cranes of Uganda. Oh. Not the black stars of Ghana. Okay. So if you watch the Ugandan flag, flag. this is the bed that you find. Interesting. Turn around, boy. Yeah. Behind me you can see a peacock. Yes. And this is actually a male peacock. So the, the male peacock is a more colorful peacock. And the color is to attract the females. So in this case, these are the uh, peahens. Those are the female peacocks. And so that's the male. I guess it's trying to attract some girls, some peahens. So I read somewhere that um, the coloring on the male peacock actually is a danger to them. Because, because they are so colorful, a predator can easily spot them. And attack and so if a male a peacock is able to preserve its color it's it's also a form of attraction for the female that means because it means it's strong that means it's able to fend off any predators that's why the colors are still intact anyway that's what I read just a little <laughs> a little fact <laughs> yeah but these are all peahens yes 
we're standing at the crocodile pond um, here at the Kumasi Zoo. Behind me, you may not be able to see it, but behind me is the West African dwarf crocodile. And then this, the, the other one is kind of hidden, but it's the slender snorted crocodile. And I'm told that they actually have to change the water in this compartment once a year. And to do that, they actually they have to chase the crocodiles out, which I thought was interesting. Um, apparently, they recently had to trim the hedges, that you, the plants that you see over there, because the crocodiles oftentimes hide in there, and so you won't be able to see them. Apparently, there's a third crocodile, which is the West African Nile crocodile, but it's not too well, so they are treating it, so you can't see it here. All right. So behind me, you see what we call the olive baboons. And in this cage, you have a few females and one male. And when you look at their rear end, you see that it's pretty colored. It's pretty colorful. The reason for this is because they are ready to mate. And from what I understand, you can see that some of them are much bigger than others. That is, their rear end is much bigger than others. That is because they are ready to cross. And once they cross, the size will subdue. It will get much, much smaller. So there's one sitting up there. I wish it could turn around so you can see it. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Oh. Um. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> okay. Is it itchy? Oh, okay. All right. So there's one sitting over there. And the, the, the back, the rear end is pretty big and very brightly colored. But according to the tour guide, once it finishes, it's done crossing, it will, it will shrink in size. Yeah, which I think is, yeah, look at this one. Ooh. Yep. Yep. You see that big behind? That big red, oh, why are you blocking us? <laughs> Um, also on the zoo premises, you see uh, baby crocodiles, tur baby turtles, and then terrapins living together. Terrapins look very much like turtles, but they're very tiny. So they live together until the crocodiles become big enough and then they are removed. The same thing with the turtles. The zoo has three African pythons. The, 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 the thing about pythons is that they're not venomous but they are large constrictor snakes. That means they crush and suffocate their prey. And do not let their sizes de deceive you. The size is not an indication of their abilities. That is to say that they may look small, but the strength comes when they try to suffocate their prey. I saw all three of them. They were, one was a wide awake. I could actually see one face to face. One was hanging up at the, at the top um, and then there was one that was between some rocks. So yeah, but they were they were fairly big. I dare, I've seen some snakes. I've actually held snakes before, and I dare say that they've they were pretty big. They were, they, I've never held anything that big, so that was impressive to me. The zoo has a few porcupines, and I just learned this during my tour. According to the tour guide, the porcupine is actually called Kotoko in Tree. There's a football team called Kotoko in the Ashanti region, and that is their symbol. And the porcupine, in this case Kotoko, is known to symbolize the Ashanti kingdom in the sense that the, Ash the Ashantis, like the porcupine, sort of never give up. The idea is that the porcupine um, consistently releases its pines without seas, and it's the same with the Ashanti Kingdom. They go to war and they, they, they keep coming back. Another thing that I saw with the green monkeys, and apparently when they feel attacked, they attack you right back. Unlike some species that will run away when they feel attacked, these guys actually, I guess, stand up for themselves. So this is the green monkey here at the Kumasi Zoo and right next to the green monkeys we have the patas monkeys these look like some models with the long legs <laughs> patas monkeys are domesticated for the most part in their infancy but once they grow 
they become very aggressive. So in their infancy, they are very nice and very playful. But once they grow up, they become very aggressive and they could attack you, attack your neighbors. So oftentimes in their infancy, you can have them as pets, but once they grow, it's advice that you... So this is a baby patas monkey. Look how cute it is. And this is gonna grow up and attack people. But it looks so cute. It's sucking on its... Oh no, it's chewing on something. African civet is a nocturnal dog. It's very similar to the genet cat. But unlike the genet cat, which is related to cats, the civet is related to dogs. <laughs> oh, you guys have chickens? Oh, they are not chickens. <laughs> they are chickens, Chinese chickens. <laughs> not, not the Akoko. Aki <laughs> is a Chinese chicken. I thought they were so cute. And apparently, they derive their names from silky nature of their feathers. Apparently, when you touch them, they are very silky in nature. The zoo has. Um, five giant tortoises they don't i couldn't really get an age estimate for these tortoises but they usually have a lifespan between 80 to 120 years i've actually seen bigger ones in zanzibar that were over 120 years old then the South african gray parrots they're actually smaller than i thought they would be and there were actually only there were two of them a male and a female no they don't talk they don't talk, at least not yet. Maybe the next time we are here, they'll start talking. Then there are two two baby swans as well. They're very young. I didn't think they were swans at first because, you know, they were so small. And I know swans to be big, but they are, they were. And hopefully when you visit, they might have, they might be older than what you see now. Bigger than what you see now. Oh, I saw geese for the first time. I've never seen geese before. They are so loud. And apparently people use them for security purposes in their homes because once they sense an intruder or somebody anybody they start to make noise so just listen to these sounds the black one that you see is called uh, the police geese and yes yeah, so they're all very loud there's a small there's one over there that's not um as loud it's actually not making any sounds but these two are obviously having a field day <laughs> Yes, we also saw some chimps. That was amazing. The baby chimp was just walking all over the zoo. And I got to thinking, what if it climbs? Because they're not right next to the lion's den, the lion's cage. So what if it climbs over and gets eaten up by the lion? But, well, that didn't happen while we were there. I did feel like it wanted to jump on me, though. But, well, yes, it, that didn't happen. And Now, <laughs> at another part of the zoo, I actually thought we were done, but we moved to another part of the zoo. And this is where you see the almighty king of the jungle, the lion. It was really just resting. The lion, the lioness, and, a f and about two cubs. I mean, the cubs were big already, so I don't know. They didn't look like cubs to me, but this, in this case, they don't really hunt. They just get fed animal parts so that's it you can see one of the cubs over there nibbling on a bone i don't know the gentleman said it's a bone from a cow hi <laughs> that's a daika 
There are quite a few of them here. Just run away. This is an emu. There's only one here. Very close to an ostrich. At first I thought it was an ostrich actually, but it's not. They do have ostriches here though. The striped hyena. The striped hyena was not very friendly. I mean, when I got close, I could see it's like, like going up, so I had to step back, but yeah. It's, it honestly feels like that camel has been peeing the whole day. Hi, my name is Jijok Lake. On social media, you can find me as Adventures of a Ghanaian Girl. This afternoon slash evening, we spent the day at the Kumasi Zoo. I got to interact with about a hundred or less species of animals, but I understand they actually have a hundred species of animals here. The zoo is undergoing major renovations, so next time you come here, I'm sure we'll have a, a better environment. Um, please do come by whenever you find yourself in Ghana. <laughs> can, you t can you tell I'm scared? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yes. Um, it's been an adventure. I had a lot of fun. We got to interact with, well, not interact. We saw, we saw a lion. No, we saw a lion, a lioness, and some cubs. We saw camels. We saw a lot of donkeys, peacocks, emus, uh, different kinds of monkeys. Uh, the Mona monkey, which I know a lot of Ghanaians are aware is very popular in the Volta region, but they are here too. And they are in the Bronga Hafu region as well. As you can see, there are so many animals like moving around me. There are peacocks. So next time you find yourself in the Ashanti region, come to the Kumasi Zoo. You won't regret it. You'll have a lot of fun. It takes about one hour, maybe an hour and a half, but you'll definitely enjoy it. There's a camel that was gifted to the Ashanti Hini by Gaddafi. So there's a lot of history here. If you like this, please hit the subscribe button. Please feel free to comment. If you have any questions, I'll get back to you. I'll answer it and share with your friends. There's so much to do here. What's behind me? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Is this the camel that's been peeing the whole day? Yeah. <laughs> this is amazing. I really had a lot of fun. <laughs> Adam, thanks for bringing me. You're welcome. <laughs> Adam is my cameraman for today. <laughs> All right. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. Thank you.